when two people have intercourse, there are always four people watching. For it is at moments of great intimacy and vulnerability that the internalized figures from the past become present. But these four ghosts bring along their internalized ghost, and so on, and so on. And this is how the generations going back to the seashore, and perhaps before, make their presence known beside us. to appear in the darkness of the night. Then as memory began to screen them out, they slipped into language, hiding between letters and jumping out between words. de textes, j'y arriverai jamais. Je crois qu'il est temps que je m'en aille. Le temps passe. of it. I'm selling everything. I'm off. Don't try to find me. As far as I'm concerned, you're a ghost.
I'm selling everything. I'm off. Don't try to find me. As far as I'm concerned, you're a ghost. In an age of darkness, long ago and far away, during periods of mourning, the living would attack the dead, throwing stones at them, hurling abuse at them, spitting and screaming with rage, for they felt they'd been abandoned to the terrors of the night. Why can't I forget? It's as if I were responsible. Why do I wake up so often in the night with a feeling that they're watching me? Shit, I'm so scared. They're all out there talking about me. God, I need some silence. At first, it was thought that ghosts would be forgotten in this new electronic age. But as things turned out, they began to use electronic gadgets for their own purpose. Now, they often jump on radio waves. There are many recorded cases of ghosts appearing in electrical shops. Cases can buy that stuff. Isn't worth anything. It's crazy. It's new, and I bought it here. Well, that stuff's worth something. Only on the point. Passes from me to you. Before that, it's liability. After that, it's useless. Look, sweetheart. I show you what this is worth. Okay, now beat it before I lose my customers. Pascal, where have you been hiding yourself? You know, it's been six months since our last tutorial. I've tried ringing your place a number of times, and all I get are crazy messages on your answering machine. I moved lots of times since then, but it was my voice on the machine. Didn't you recognize it? No, it uh, was like a ghost in a machine. Uh, um, I worked on it, the idea, and I saw Jacques Derrida the other day. And he gave me some suggestions. 
so I wanted to get in touch with you about this this week anyway. Bien sûr, Pascal. Whatever I bumped you, it's always by chance. I can't go there all the time. I can't stand sitting in that place. You know, it's full of creeps down there. So, I'm uh, just another creep, huh? No, not you. I'll tell you something. Even when I'm not there, I get someone to tape it for me so I can listen to it over and over again. And I do. Pascal, you sure have some imagination. I like juxtapositions, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I like to play it any places, like in bars, in the baths, in subways. And you should be pleased, because I've made you a kind of god. You're in all places at all times. So, it would appear that I am to play the master, Pascal, as my disciple. Through the technology of a Sony Walkman, she is to feel the presence. The power relation of master-disciple is now going to be reified, anesthetized by... Fuck you. I'm sick of it. I'm off. I'm heading for adventure. in a recorder? Will it simply be that of a ghost in a machine? If this is the case, then, uh, so dommage. Look, Pascal, since uh, you know Daddy Da, why don't um, you come along with me? Um, I think I've got to sell this lot first, so maybe I can't. Look, since I've got you here now, come on, come on, let's go. Bonjour, Jacques. Ça va? You uh, both know each other? You know, Pascal is my problem student. She says I'm a creep, never attends my lectures, but I always listen to her intriguing ideas. Really? Pleased to meet you, Pascal. Me too, thanks. We've never met. No. But it feels like I've known you for years. Ah, okay. Perhaps you could uh, talk to her about some of her ideas. Bien sûr, bien sûr. Et nous avons peu de temps. Mais brièvement, Pascal, quelle est l'idée de votre idée? L'idée de mon idée, c'est que je n'ai pas d'idée. Ah, je vois. On en parle demain. I dreamt that I was talking to myself. Then something happened and I and me became different people. We were walking through a city. Night was falling and the sky was becoming radiant with electric lights. We started to walk towards the ocean. 
Suddenly, people were rushing in the opposite direction. There was terrible panic. But the people who were rushing towards us were the dead of centuries that had gone before. Their crushing weight turned into a tidal wave. It hit us, and only one of us survived. Faut être euh, hanté euh, par un fantôme, c'est avoir la mémoire de ce qu'on n'a jamais vécu au présent, avoir la mémoire de ce qui, au fond, n'a jamais eu la forme de la présence. She met him many times. She asked him about Kafka, Heidegger, Marx, and Freud. But when she left, she was never sure who she'd been speaking to. She was left with an afterimage that seemed to be drawing her own phantoms out of herself. Je voudrais vous demander une chose. Est-ce que vous croyez aux fantômes? Je ne sais pas. C'est une question difficile. Est-ce qu'on demande d'abord à, à un fantôme s'il croit aux fantômes? Ici, le fantôme, c'est moi. Euh, dès lors qu'on me demande de jouer mon propre rôle dans un scénario filmique plus ou moins improvisé, euh, j'ai l'impression de laisser parler un fantôme à ma place. Paradoxalement, au lieu de jouer mon propre rôle, je laisse à mon insu un fantôme me ventriloquer, c'est-à-dire parler à ma place. Et c'est ça qui est peut-être le plus amusant. Le cinéma est un art d'une fantomachie, si vous voulez. Et je crois que le cinéma, quand on ne s'y ennuie pas, c'est ça. C'est un art de laisser revenir les fantômes. Alors c'est ce que c'est ce que nous faisons ici. Donc euh, si euh, si je suis un fantôme, c'est-à-dire si actuellement, croyant parler de ma voix, précisément parce que je crois parler de ma voix, je la laisse euh, euh, parasiter par la voix de l'autre, pas de n'importe quel autre, mais de mes propres fantômes, si on peut dire, à ce moment-là, il y a, il y a des fantômes. Et ce sont eux qui vont vous répondre, qui vous ont peut-être déjà répondu. Tout ça, c'est une... Aujourd'hui, ça doit se traiter, me semble-t-il, dans un, un échange entre euh, l'art du cinéma, dans ce qu'il a de plus, de plus inouï, de plus inédit, finalement, et quelque chose de la psychanalyse. Je crois que cinéma plus psychanalyse égale euh, science du fantôme. Vous savez, euh, Freud, euh, toute sa vie, a eu affaire euh, au problème du fantôme. Voilà, le, le, le téléphone, c'est le fantôme. Je vais... Allô Yes Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, there will be a small seminar uh, tomorrow afternoon. It's a kind of closed seminar, but you, you may come if you want, at 4, 4 and 15, uh, 15 past 4 p.m., uh, Salle des Résistants. Mm -hmm. And there will be another seminar on Wednesday, next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Yes, yes. Ok, je serai très heureux de vous rencontrer. Bye. Alors, ça c'était une, une voix fantomatique, c'était quelqu'un que je ne connais pas, euh, qui aurait pu me raconter n'importe quelle histoire, qui venait des États-Unis. Bon. 
en se présentant de la part d'un ami, etc., etc., etc. Bon, ce que Kafka dit de, dit de, de la correspondance euh, des lettres, enfin, de, de la, la relation épistolaire, ça vaut aussi pour la relation téléphonique. Et je crois qu'aujourd'hui, tout le, tout le développement de la technologie des télécommunications, au lieu de euh, restreindre l'espace des fantômes, comme on pourrait le penser, on pourrait penser que la science, aujourd'hui la technique, bon, euh, laisse derrière eux l'époque des fantômes, qui était l'époque des manoirs, d'une de, certaine technologie de frustes, enfin d'une certaine époque euh, périmée, alors que je crois au contraire que l'avenir est au fantôme et que la technologie moderne de l'image, de la cinématographie, de la télécommunication est, euh, décuple le pouvoir euh, des fantômes, et le retour des fantômes. Euh, C'est au fond pour tenter les fantômes que j'ai accepté de, de figurer euh, dans un film en me disant que peut-être peut-être on aurait les uns et les autres la chance de laisser venir à nous des fantômes. Le fantôme, le fantôme de Marx, le fantôme de Freud, le fantôme de Kafka, le fantôme de cet Américain. Vous, bon, moi je vous connais depuis ce matin, mais déjà vous êtes traversé pour moi par toutes sortes de, de, de figures fantomatiques. Donc, je ne sais pas si je crois ou si je ne crois pas aux fantômes, mais je dis, vive, vive les fantômes. Et, et vous est-ce que vous y croyez au fantôme Oui, certainement. Oui, absolument. Maintenant, absolument. Maintenant, certainement. Et maintenant, bien sûr. You're crazy to be so concerned with this ritual of yours. During the war, when the Russians asked for his body, we used to say they could have his body, but they'd have to leave his ideas here. Did you know that originally it was buried in another part of the cemetery, almost a pauper's grave? I just hope they got the right bones, not that it matters. History's gone and can never be relived. History is just a point of view like anything else. It changes according to where you happen to be standing. I was walking through a desert when I came across the ruins of an ancient seaport. But the sea had dried up many centuries before. At first I could see myself clearly as if I was standing in front of a mirror. Then I vanished and all I could see was the grey black sand which was beginning to cover everything. Then the voices started. At first, they seemed like the insects that were crawling in the sand. Then they seemed to be coming from me. They were living inside me, but they were watching me at the same time. Then they took me out of myself, and I could see myself clearly, walking away on the horizon. thought of herself as I, but the more she encountered the decay around her, the more she moved into a gap between I and me. For it's well known that the social decay produces psychic fragmentation. And the more things break up, the more myths flourish, attempting to make historical sense 
out of historical chaos. She began to feel the presence of so many others inside her, as if they were clawing away at her flesh from the inside. Look at her. She thinks she's different from the rest of us. She thinks she's got immunity. But when they come here, they won't make any exception for her. Masuda was an extraordinary woman. I met her on a film set when she was advising on native costume on a film about cargo cults of the Far East. She was able to move with ease between two completely different cultures, as if part of her was at home in the rich world and part of her was at home in the poor. She told me about a village by a river that had been periodically invaded by an army of rats. The villagers were afraid of them, but they also worshipped them. I wouldn't close my eyes if I was her. They can still see you, even if you can't see them. Trying to pretend they're not there won't help her. They believe the rats embodied the ghosts of their ancestors. By their speed and guile, they had been able to run through time to visit their homeland. Years before, when their land and wealth had been taken from them, a strange event had taken place there. To wake is to fall. It's better to fall once and get it over with than to stay fast asleep forever. You're on the point of waking. You're standing on the edge of a division that may never be healed. To fall is to pass between. To fall is to touch but never make contact. To fall is to fail and succeed at the same time. To fall is to enter a darkness, darker than all the places in your dreams. But to fall is to be real. For a moment, forever. One night, the 
rats had eaten a woman who was lying asleep by the river. They had ripped off her clothes, and by the time she'd woke up, it was too late. They had entered her body by every possible opening. She began to shout and scream, but the voices that came out of her were the voices of the dead. inside and outside at the same time, to be the one who sees and the one who is seen, to enter the place where space becomes time and time stops still, to escape from time forever. All rituals are an expression of this wish, but it's a wish you cannot succumb to. For if you don't wake soon, all your choices will diminish, and you'll return to the place you came from without even a moment of knowing. that came out of her were the voices of the dead. The rest ate all her flesh from the inside, until all that was left was a clean white skeleton. Then the dogs came out and ripped the bones apart, but the rats returned and set upon the dogs, leaving nothing of them remaining except their tails. Suddenly, a big black bird flew out of the sky. Les grands, gigantesques. Who gives a fuck how big it is? swooped down and ate up all the rats. Then the bird changed and assumed the form of two women, both of whom were beautiful. And when they were together, they had magical powers. They told the villagers that a new era was to begin when they would be joined by all their ancestors. But some of the villagers, who had committed crimes and bad deeds, with the wives of the dead, were so afraid of their return that they tricked the women to go down to the sea where a great wave took them away. She told me myths have the same qualities as radio waves. When they arrive in a village, they seem to have come from nowhere. That's why, so often, they are credited with supernatural origin. Masuda told me not to scoff at her story, for it contained more truth than might at first appear. For things are not always what they seem. They also have an inner life of their own.
What's it like over there? Same as here, really. But is it easier to sleep and easier to wake? Depends how much rage you can get rid of in your lovemaking. How much you feel cared for and how much you care. I know what you mean, but it sounds better with a French accent. Try this with a French accent. How will we get some fucking money? Get it like the others get it. Nick it, swipe it, win it, con it. Have you ever worked? Yeah. For a while I worked in this big company that dealt in money. So why didn't you take some while you were on the inside? I never saw any of the actual money. Only the fat bastards who eat it. And they do eat it, so it doesn't get stolen from them. They store it in their bellies till it converts to money turds. Then they shit it out straight into the bank. No. Oui. What were you doing over there? Étudiante en anthropologie. What did you learn about? Rituals, cults, magical beliefs of the primitives. The usual rubbish. But I studied the cargo cults, you know, of the Far East. I wanted to go there, because they still exist now. Why give it up? I used to love my teacher. He was so wise. But then, one day, I caught him staring at a picture of a naked Indian woman in a book called La Vie Sexuelle des Sauvages. And I laughed, you know. So since then, he ignored me and he gave me low marks. A mean bastard. Hmm? Okay, I made up the last bit. Anyway, maybe I'll tell you later what really happened. If I learn to trust you. Oh, that's got it. Okay, let's gear off. building over there. D stands for desire. D stands for death. D for dynamite. D for despair. D for drugs, dice and dollars. D for darkness. D for deathness. D for destruction. D for dole and depression. D for Derrida. D for desire. Two miles, a thousand and twenty-eight, rising more slowly. Malin Head, west southwest four, sixteen miles, a thousand and twenty-seven, now four. Now the weather forecast for inshore waters of England, Wales and Scotland until 1800. A weak cold front night. Milford Haven to Solway Firth. Northwest course three or four, including perhaps course five or six in north. Fair, good. Shit, George, you're Solway driving me crazy! Perth, including the island waters. West to southwest, course five to course seven, perhaps locally gale force eight. Occasional showers, good. Finally, Bentham, Perth to Berwick, mainly west, course five or six. Isolated showers, good. And now the weather reports from stations for 2 BWBST on the 13th of April. Boomer, West 4, 27 miles, 1024, rising slow. How do you find the room? Burnhead, West 3, 8 miles. The room is fine, thanks. Five, Sleep okay? Yeah. West, west, but I had a strange five, dream. Five, I dreamt that I was being chased by a gang. West, or that I... 
might have been part of a gang chasing somebody else. It was very frightening. Perhaps the room's still a bit damp. No, I often do things like this anyway. The room is fine. What's that noise? That's George. He stays here sometimes. He's obsessed with drums. It was his idea to take this flat above the drum shop. Right, that is enough. For Christ's sake, George, will you turn that fucking bloody weather forecast off? Sweetheart, I'm going out. Leave you in peace, OK? West 5, recent charts. Sorry about that. He has a thing about the weather forecast. He listens to the long range, the local forecast, the worldwide, the shipping, reads books on it, studies maps on it, and makes up drum rhythms to accompany the forecast on the radio. He's a fucking nutcase. If you stick around, no doubt you'll hear more about it. Can I take a shower? Yeah, sure. We just had the hot water turned on. The landlord thinks that'll get him more rent. Bastard. Yeah. You know, when you arrived last night, I thought I'd seen you somewhere before. You remind me of a girl who took my photo by the wall of the communards in Paris. You ever been there, in Père Lachaise? I went there often. But I don't remember if it was me. It would be a strange coincidence. I'd like to believe it. Is this where it happened? Oui. Suddenly it doesn't seem that long ago. No. Do you take my picture standing by the wall? Why not? Could you show me how? Don't move. Pardon, mother. I have to speak to this American fool. Thank you. La Commune was the first proletarian revolution. The communards fought with great bravery. In the streets of Paris, from behind the barricades, they fought down to the last one. Women, children, and men alike. Shit. The bourgeois soldiers took no prisoners. Every sympathizer was shot. The last battle of the Commune took place in this cemetery. They fought from grave to grave. No shit! At the end of the battle, the bourgeois soldiers lined up the 251 survivors against this wall. The Communar all died with extreme courage with one shout. Vive la commune. Gee, is that where the word commie comes from? When the first cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, went into space, he took two things with him. A picture of Lenin and a piece of a communal flag. The Americans were the first ones in space. So, in spite of these errors, they could not kill the idea. The idea lives on, like ideas often do. No one can kill an idea. Ideas have wings and can fly through eternal space. My God, this is a kind of conspiracy. So was that you? No, it was not me. 
No, when I think about it now, she was much older than you then, and that was a couple of years ago. You studied anthropology. Is that why you put that photo up about cargo cults? Yeah, I studied anthropology. But now, strictly speaking, I'm a student of ghosts. I studied with Jacques Derrida once. He taught me a lot about ghosts. But he couldn't teach me everything. Because there are things that a man can't teach to a woman, right? Sure. Why did you come to London? I came to London because I wanted to study in the third world. So I chose London. You think we're more primitive? Or did you just come hoping to see some riots? No. I came because of the music. Well, that's a myth in itself. I suppose all cities generate their own myths. London, the music, Paris, the barricades. Do you think these myths are attempts to avoid something? Well, I just think that now things are starting to break up and people will start to believe in anything. Hmm. Do you want to take your shower? Yeah. So I'll see you in a minute, okay? Just a 
Freud, on parlait de, du fantôme de Freud tout à l'heure, n'est-ce pas Vous savez, les fantômes ne viennent pas, ils reviennent, comme on dit en français, ce sont des revenants. Ça suppose donc la mémoire d'un passé qui n'a jamais eu la forme de, de la présence. Mais euh, je me suis intéressé à une certaine théorisation que des amis psychanalystes, Nicolas Abraham, qui est maintenant mort, et Maria Torok, ont euh, élaboré, à la suite de Freud, leur théorie du fantôme part en fait euh, de euh, la théorie du deuil. Dans le deuil normal, comme dit Freud, on intériorise le mort. On prend le mort sur soi, on se l'assimile, et cette intériorisation, qui est en même temps une idéalisation, accueille le mort. Tandis que dans un deuil qui ne se développe pas normalement, dans un travail du deuil qui ne marche pas bien en quelque sorte, il n'y a pas de véritable intériorisation, il y a ce que Nicolas Abraham et Maria Torok appellent une incorporation, c'est-à-dire que le mort est pris en nous, mais ne devient pas nous-mêmes, et il occupe une place particulière dans notre corps. Et il peut parler tout seul, il peut hanter ou ventriloquer notre propre corps, notre propre discours. Si bien que le fantôme qui est enfermé dans une crypte, en nous, nous sommes comme une sorte de, de cimetière pour des fantômes. Le fantôme, ça peut être aussi non seulement notre propre inconscient, mais plus précisément, c'est l'inconscient d'un autre. C'est l'inconscient de l'autre qui parle à notre place. C'est non seulement notre inconscient, mais l'inconscient d'un autre qui nous joue des tours, qui parle à notre place, ça peut être terrifiant. Ça peut être terrifiant, mais il se passe des choses. age of electric buildings, crude beliefs of the Middle Ages are poking their heads out of the gutters of time. Another item was a large and heavy bone, up to 30 feet long and 6 inches in diameter, with a knob at the end, used as a kind of vigilante battering ram of righteousness. righteousness. This knob represented the end of a snake. In the central islands, some people had seen the snake. Some people had seen the ancestors emerge as white men from the belly of a dragon bird and sent in one area, there was a snake cult. 
Weirmen carried a large pool with a knob on the end, which represented the head of a snake. When it was carried on their shoulders, the men merely went where the snake took them. It was credited with great powers. It was also used to detect crimes, and it became a kind of battering ram of righteousness. It was possibly inspired in part by the old Baigana Python cult to the north, which also had a sin discovering battering ram. I don't understand a fuck. Seems okay. She says she didn't put it in her mouth, but I know she did. And when it was as far as it would go, she started to suck and suck. But when it remained dry, she bit as hard as she could. That's how she swallowed it. And that's why she's always hungry, because the bit she swallowed ate everything else inside her to get its own back. So there she is, empty and so hateful, waiting for the revenge that she knows is going to come. She's had it. I think there's a cold front coming over. She's going fucking nuts again. What's happening in there? Not another typewriter, Pascal, please. I'm sick of it. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. I can't try to say. I keep going around in circles. But why don't you come in here and listen to some music? George, you'll dance for us. Okay, if it'll warm things up. What are you writing about anyway that's so important? I thought you'd given all that up for adventure. I have. Almost. I was trying to write about something I saw the other day now, nearby the canal. It really frightened me. I saw some children playing a game that resembled the elements of a snake cult I once read about. Have you ever been to the canal? He twined through the city like a giant snake. I'll show you how to dance like a snake. qui avait à peu près sept ans d'âge, qui marchait, et ils avaient une énorme perche sur l'épaule, quelque chose d'énorme. Et on aurait dit qu'ils allaient succomber sous le poids de cette perche. Mais non. And suddenly, I had this strong urge to put it in my mouth. But I didn't. Parce qu'ils auraient éclaté ma tête qui m'aurait étouffé. So I didn't.
me a copy of this stuff, please? What kind of stuff is it? It's the thesis. Why do you need to know? I just want a copy. Well, I don't want your life history, darling. Just want to know what kind of paper it is, right? I wonder if he'll be angry. Oh shit. Which How could you not tell me there was different kinds of paper in it, eh? Now I'm gonna to have to examine each one individually. Which I'm not paid for, by the way. I just get paid to press the buttons, if you don't mind. jammed with this stuff in it, eh? I thought you said this was a thesis. It is, but I need to write as word comes. Mm. Seems pretty heavy stuff to me, eh? <laughs> I'll maybe run myself off a copy and read it later. Must be a right nutcase to write this stuff, eh? Hey, Jim, you seen this? I told you. It always gets jammed with filth in it. Same every time. Listen, you fucking voyeur, you pass me my stuff and I'll leave you with your fantasies. Listen, pisshead. If you're looking for a fight, you've come to the right place. First you come in with all that filth, right? Then you start mouthing off like you know something about something, huh? Why don't you just get your thesis and stick it up your bum? <laughs> <laughs> people have intercourse, there is always one other present. But this other takes on a form that cannot be described. It is the trauma itself. The witness. Why do you always carry so much junk about with you? You never read when you're out anyway. It's a fetish. Huh? It means that it's in case I get stuck to something to think about. Yeah. You think too much. Mm. Let's get on the boat. I'm not going to hang about for George. Yeah. It is between, and it is excluded. A noise that breaks the enigma of the night. A mirror that refuses to confirm existence. An encounter with a form of sexuality that signifies death. Paris Commune's about, but what about the ghost story? Oh, it's about the origin of religion, magical ways of thinking, as conversations. It's about cults and rituals. And what about the story of H? It's not for you. I'm afraid you're not old enough. You better tell me or I'll chuck you in. Try this to see what happens. Okay. It's very sexual. It's about a perversion. What's the difference between a cult and a perversion? I don't know what the difference is, but I know they've got the same feeling in some strange way. You know what? I read something erotic. And when I read them at my anthropologic work, I really feel I'm there. What happens? Um, c'est une histoire sexuelle. C'est une histoire sadomasochiste. But it's more interesting than that, though. Well, what happens? Everything. Is the woman who tells the story the one who plays the part? Yeah, that's her. Is that the man on the back of the book? And is that the woman on the front, with only the text between them? Oui. Is it about rising above excitement and falling beneath despair? Oui. 
Is it about a condition beyond agony where they've abandoned themselves completely? Oui. Do they fuck in silence or do they hide themselves in noise? Oui, both. Do their strange sexual actions have the feel of a primitive ritual? Oui. Are there ten men watching what's happening? And are there ten women watching them? Does she like it and hate it at the same time? And does he hate it and like it? Oui. Always. Do they continue until they're beyond exhaustion? Does she pretend to look at him with tenderness? Oui. Does he degrade her without compassion? Oui, of course. Tell me. Does she enjoy it all in a real sort of a way? Oh, shut up, you fool! Well, excuse me for having a hard on. Go over there and play with your fucking weather forecast. We don't need your comments. Fuck off, you perverts. Do they mark her skin? Mm. And do the marks on her skin feel like her real self would feed from the encapsulation of her body? Mm. Do they brand their initials onto her skin, and does she come with each letter and twice with each word? Oui. Do they pay her for giving herself to you? No, they don't pay her. They don't know how much to pay such a perfect image of themselves. That's why, in some ways, she triumphs over them. For really, they became the victims of their own victim. But there's one thing I left out. She couldn't see any of this, for she's completely blind. And the thing they fear most is that she could see in spite of her blindness. Oh, God. Oh, George, can't you fuck off and leave us in peace? Go out and get us some money and you can take that thing with you. Screw you two, I'm going into town. Need a long walk to cool down. Isolated shower, thousand and twenty four, rising. 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 Well, I don't blame him for being pissed off. Sure, it's his own fault. He always wants to hang around. His trouble is he doesn't know who he is. Fuck, what a shit I am. Too broke to buy and too scared to steal. such an ugly fucker. Not ugly in a strong way, but just a weakling. I'd like to change my bone structure, but there's nothing I can do about that. I wish I could change my skin, but that would be too expensive. It's the way I move that betrays me most. I walk like a turd. <laughs> if I wasn't so tense all the time, I probably wouldn't act like a court fucking jester. God, I need a screw. What the fuck am I going to do? Fuck it, I'll buy a suit. That'll show them who's a castrato. Piss heads, piss heads, piss heads. Look at that filthy animal trying to scratch himself clean. No amount of scratching can take his scurvy away. How could anyone think of touching him? She was right not to touch him. But she's worse in many ways. She's falling apart before his eyes, but he can't see it. They're both in decay because they're killing each other. They can't change it now. Not once the process has begun.
the ritual began when the women told each other stories about the sexual prowess of their ancestors. They were supposed to believe that they were alone, but all the time they were being overheard by a man dressed up as a wild pig. Fuck, someone's on the crossing. On realizing they had been overheard, they tried to send the man away, but he returned dressed up as a jaguar. Then in order to keep their secrets, they played a trick on him. They said, Jaguar, are you really one of the ancestors? Tell us how it was then, when you got up to your games with the women. The jaguar said he'd showed them, and they encouraged him to begin. But when he was off guard, one of them killed him. The jaguar then turned back into a man again, but couldn't remember any of the conversation that had taken place between the women. Right. Now we're going to act something out here. Been planning this for, for some time. You wanted a play? Well, now you've got two parts in my play. You know what's going to happen, don't you? Yeah. Hmm? We're going to watch ourselves in the mirror. And you are going to watch us watching ourselves in the mirror. Over no, there. not that. Not and that. And we're going to watch you watching us watching ourselves. No, watching us. Something here worth nicking. How can you talk about things like this after what happened? What else is there to talk about? I've forgotten everything that happened here already. Anyway, how could it have happened? It doesn't make sense. Well, I suppose that's true. It doesn't seem possible. The only thing I can't forget is the smell. It'll be here for days. We better wash it off. I've got an idea about this now. Now that's it. They won't know what it is anyway. It smells like summertime. I wish it was summer now.
euh, l'an dernier, j'étais il y a exactement un an, j'étais à Prague pour participer à des séminaires privés avec des philosophes tchèques dissidents, philosophes tchèques interdits, euh, qui ne peuvent pas enseigner dans l'université. Et j'avais été suivi tout le temps par la police secrète tchèque, qui d'ailleurs ne se dissimulait pas. Donc, après ce séminaire, je me suis promené dans la ville de Kafka, comme si j'étais à la poursuite du fantôme de Kafka, qui en fait lui-même me poursuivait, n'est-ce pas Je suis allé devant les maisons de Kafka, il y en a deux à Prague, puis sur la tombe de Kafka, et j'ai découvert le lendemain, au moment où j'ai été arrêté, prétendument pour trafic de drogue, que c'était au moment où j'étais sur la tombe de Kafka que la police secrète tchèque était entrée, alors que j'étais occupé avec le fantôme de Kafka, en quelque sorte, est entrée dans mon hôtel et a euh, placé, a disposé les petits sachets de drogue dans ma valise pour m'arrêter le lendemain. Bon. Quand j'étais interrogé par la police, qui m'a demandé ce que je faisais à Prague, j'ai dit, eh bien, je prépare un travail sur Kafka, ce qui était la vérité, euh, sur un texte de Kafka, issu, extrait du procès, un petit texte qui s'appelle « Devant le bois ». Et si bien que, pendant toute cette séquence de l'interrogatoire, de l'emprisonnement, le fantôme de Kafka était effectivement là, et les scénarios écrits par Kafka étaient en train de régler toute la scène, qui était une scène du procès d'une certaine manière, comme si nous jouions tous un film programmé par le fantôme Kafka. unknown movements far below the surface, sea of primitive desires, sea of endless triangles, sea of ritualistic murder, sea of history, sea of greed, sea of guilt, sea of eight million false faces, sea of lost hopes, sea of despair, Sea of occasional reason. Sea without time. Do I have any choice but to suffer my own history? It feels like some mysterious figure is directing everything I do. Someone who hasn't been present for a very long time. They're coming closer. I've been expecting them. They really don't know what's happening. They don't know the end. much time left. The wish to stop time is a deathly wish. They're going to see an image of their own struggle with their own persona. They'll be left with that. I'll leave them that at least.
beyond the mask of intellect, beyond the reaches of consciousness, a nothing, a no thing, a nowhere,